Hey guys, very crudely yours here for my week 19 review for the DVD Fiends. This is the Necrophiles. I'm going to do a joint review of part 1 and 2, since they both go in this box set. Let me show the box set off first. It's a really nice presentation. This is released by, uh, I don't know if you can see it or not. This is a box set by Rape Entertainment. Such a great name for a company. Front and the back. And, like I said, nice presentation with this. Super thin, but eh, it gets the job done and it looks pretty nice. Something I hate about putting it back in is that it always gets bumped. Alright, there we go. Okay. The first film follows a. Uh, serial rapist and killer, not necessarily in that order, named Logan, who, if you couldn't guess by the title, is, of, of course, a necrophile. Like I said, raping and killing, not necessarily in that order. Anyway, on one of his midnight, um, sprees, he is arrested by the cops, and after a little bit of police brutality, he's about three pounds heavier from a little lead they fill him full of. So... Of course, that really doesn't look good for the cops, because they just killed a uh, uh, suspect that was uh, <laughs> already in custody. But anyway, it's never elaborated on. I, I never got that. Um, I mean, I don't know many cops that can shoot someone in handcuffs and get away with it, but... Anyway, uh, plot holes aside, because if, if I picked up the plot holes in this movie... Uh, I, I could sit here all day and just destroy this movie for the plot holes in it. But anyway, getting back to the plot. Uh, a group of Satanists that worshipped Logan decide to resurrect him using his, um, let me see right here, and one of his sons from his rape victim, this little infant, they sacrifice it and, uh, well, Fan hits the shit because he comes back super pissed off and kills half the Satanists. Uh, he comes back as a very just horrible, cheesy-looking zombie. Again, I'll, I'll show his picture right here. There he is. That's the very first shot of him as a zombie. There. And uh, as soon as he gets back, like he just proceeds to just rape everything in sight. He walks around sport, sporting a two-foot schlong constantly hanging out of his pants. Um, there's no hardcore in this movie or part two, which is kind of a shame because this is this will be one of the ones that you could throw hardcore in there and actually would kind of make the movie a little nastier. Uh, most movies that do that, to, in my opinion, it doesn't work well. Like Thriller, it didn't work well for that. Uh, hard Gore, it didn't. But, I don't know. I think it would have worked really well for this one. Uh, it worked well for um, Angel of Death 2, so... But, anyway, getting back to the, like I said, the loosely drawn up plot. Uh, the Satanists decide that, uh, since they can't control Logan, they're going to have to destroy him. So they summon up, uh, a demon in the form of the infant they sacrificed. Which is basically just a, a fishing pole, and they've taken the, um, baby and tied to it, and they just flail it and whack people with it. That's their way of killing them. Uh, and it goes off, and the, the cops are now hunting down a copycat killer, which is actually Logan, since they know that he's dead. And uh, it goes off with a pretty horrible showdown between the demon infant Logan and the police officers. And uh, it ends with a pretty shitty dismemberment of Logan. So they killed him They killed him a second time. And that's really all the first one. Like I said, there's not much of it to describe. It's just lots of sex and gore. I don't know how someone could not love this movie. And it's cheesy, cheesy, cheesy gore. Now the second one. The second one is the best. I, I love the second one. Um, starts out with a new rapist, who I don't know if you can see him right here, is going on uh, a rape spree. He gets drunk one night and pukes and pisses on a grave, and somehow his puke and piss resurrect Logan the, f what, second time he's been resurrected? So, it's revealed later on in the movie that that was his brother, and that's how, because it was like bloodlines, some crazy shit like that. But anyway, just... Two rapists, one living, one dead, of the same bloodline, go on a spree throughout the entire movie, not realizing that each other is alive until the very end. 
And then uh, the movie ends with them calling a prostitute and just one of the worst scenes in cinema history. It's horrible. I'm not even going to tell you what it is. You're going to have to get this and watch it, but I'll give you a hint. The top picture right there, that naked woman getting gutted like a fish, that's in the last scene of the movie. So, where to order at? After uh, Cinema Wasteland, which will be the first of April, uh, probably in about two or three weeks, Lewis is going to start stocking these at Massacre Video, so I'll post the link in the column, uh, or you can keep checking back in if you want to Massacre Video. But they're about 25 or 30 bucks, not, not too expensive. Uh, highly recommend this if you like sex and violence. This is just a sexy splatter classic. It's disgusting. It has... I mean, how many movies do you know that, that have reverse necrophilia? I mean, zombie rape. That's something that you've really never heard of before. So, I really can't praise these movies enough. They're so horrible, and I love them for all the wrong reasons. So, judge for yourself if you would like this. If you like your films politically correct, I would not check this one out. But if you don't, then give it a shot. There you go. Snatching off a dick right there. There's lots of castration in this movie, too. So, Necrofiles, released by Rape Entertainment. Ordered at MassacreVideo.com.